Uh, here we go. Um, so usually postmodernity is not seen as a time preoccupied with the spiritual models or authorities. However, the first level of analysis would suggest exactly that. Reaction to the deaths of celebrities resemble worshipping of the saints. A worshipping of the celebrity plays the role of a new type of spirituality, very similar to what Dutch scholar Andre Joles describes as an occupation of the spirit. Gesites Beschäftigung. Such is to be found in so-called small forms, as Vita or legend. Vita is de facto summary of the juridical, uh, juridical process of beatification, which is in Roman Catholic Church comp comprised of the juridical evidences. The sacrosanctness must be proven before the jury. Process usually consists of three elements, the testimonies about the existence of the paranormal moments in saint's life, the testimonies about the existence of the posthumous miracles, and additionally, responses to counter-arguments presented by the opponents' accu accusations on these saints. Let us quickly address those three elements of Vita in the case of David Bowie and point on some examples. Firstly, the paranormal details are discussed in three narratives on how Bowie staged his death, his last album, Black Star, was interpreted as, announcements, as an announcement of a tragic event, especially the song Lazarus. Narratives about a symbolism of the date of the album release, the date of the Bowie's birthday, and the date of his death. Uh, and, of course, his album, The Black Star, was, um, as I said, uh, was the, uh, also the part of, of, of it, yeah, of course. So, uh, secondly, canonization of the saint demands posthumous miracles which usually take place at a saint's grave or on the body of the Beatus or alternatively the miracle is related to an object which is then called relic. The album Black Star played such a role. Some owners claim that there are stars appearing on the Black Star on the cover if the album is exposed to sun. At last, Procedure consists uh, not only of the listing of the positive values, of course, but also negative ones. Yoles writes about procedure resembling the criminal procedure. In the case of David Bowie, those who presented the counter-arguments usually leaned on the allegedly Nazi episodes in his life. The famous is called the Victoria Station incident, where Bowie waved to the crowd in gesture that some alleged was a Nazi salute. We will not elaborate it, this in detail since the accusations were easily dismissed. So the proposed first level of the analysis points to the fact that there exists a new form of the occupation of the spirit. Celebrities are new role models while their beatifications resemble a beatification of saints. However, besides content of the saints vita, virtuous life in a counterpoint to life of rock and roll star, the identification with the contemporary saint is not a typical identification with a symbolic other. Celebrities vitae are not truly aiming at identification with the superego, the political or personal project, specific political idea, or worshiping of some other values or religious cult. Today's vita is the form of narration that does not look affirmatively on a power, religious, virtues, or any other kind of power. On the contrary, it suggests that it is best not to be in any form of dependence or relation to power, to free oneself from power in order to be original or authentic. In an article published on January 12th in Croatian newspaper titled Why David Bowie was more important to me than school literature or Tito, we can find the specificities of such identification. An article has been written in the first person confession narrative, marked by lyric pathos, while moments in author's life were described as points influenced by Bowie's work. For example, as a kid I got Bowie's album, one of the greatest has gone, etc. At the first sight, it seems like the author has identified himself with an ideal, in Freudian language, with ego, ideal, or superego. The holiness of Bowie is undisputed, undisputed, as well as the fact 
that he presents a model, I quote, one of those that have been changing our lives. Even more, he is functioning like as a counterpoint to the political cultural role models as well as role models active in the private life. Bowie opposes, writes the author, I quote, school readings, professors, friends and trends, television, parades, relatives, and symptomatically, I would add, Tito. Popular culture of the 70s and 80s played a very important role of Yugoslav youth as it was a, a crucial for a process of transition from stoogy conservatism backwardness of then actual ideology. A transition left a trail of what will become a new type of so-called post-ideology marked by the individuality, narcissism and lack of common causes. Identification, identification that is putting Bowie in the counterposition to Tito signalizes the non-existence of the symbolical other. So there is a legend that telephonists refused to forward the message on Stalin's death since she thought that Stalin was immortal. This and other reactions to the death of David Bowie dismisses such negative ego ideal identifications. However, only in order to clear the place for a new type of ideology. In order to see how it works, it is important to address at first sight a different problem. It is not only that mourning Bowie presents a new form of spirituality and special form of identification, but also the extensive reactions point on the pathological elements in this phenomenon. Let us quickly summarize only fi final findings on how melancholia as pathological form of mourning entered public discourse. There are characteristics of melancholia that can more or less easily differentiate the melancholia from normal mourning. The most significant one is the ambivalence. Regardless of diminution in his self-regard, melancholic subject find satisfaction in self-exposure. Melancholic is showing a lack of the feelings of shame in front of other people, the insistent communicativeness, as Freud writes. On social networks, Bowie's fans repeatedly stated that with him, part of them has gone. At the same time, extensively described their pain. Utterances were accompanied with dramatic tone, I'm shocked, I cannot believe, I am confused, I don't know what to believe. believe. Poetic remarks such as, my heart nearly stopped reading this post. With a negation of the event, this cannot be truth. truth. The most symptomatic were the ones on how, I quote, this world, this world is too cruel and this world didn't deserve him. Two typical posts in this regard like, go, go, go like this. The first, I'm so sad. I grew up in the 80s listening to his music and even still to this day, fuck cancer. It takes all the good ones away. And the second, we all have to die, but we don't uh, all share our talents with the world. Taking into account that Bowie was a successful musician and, needless to say, a person of high reputation in a society, typical question often raised in melancholic psychoanalytical therapy emerges also here. Who is the objectified persona? Freud resolved this paradox through an ambivalence that is accompanying the processes of substitution of loved object with the ego and objectivization of such transformed ego. Melancholic is able to publicly express his her sorrow because he she turned the ego into an object. He she splits the ego in two, making it possible for ego to put itself under the scrutinized critique. In other words, one part judges the critical other critically. As Freud writes, the shadow of the object fell upon the ego. The subject presented, uh, present sorry, in uh, listed examples can partially be identified with anonymous persona who would take Bowie's place instead, a part that is low on self-esteem, and partially with a persona identified with Bowie. It does not take hardcore psychoanalysis to see the presence of narcissism in this process. Identification of the ego with loved object is marked by unconscious which is not related with the loss of that persona as such. 
I quote, what consciousness is aware of in the work of melancholia is that that's not the essential part of it, as Freud, Freud noted. Melancholic basically substitutes conflict within his, her ego for the struggle over the object. Such supposition aims at maintaining the, an illusion that loved object is the primal cause of the pain. The strange impression that there is something else in those statements comes from the regression from the object catexis to the still narcissistic oral phase of the libido. Primary narcissism of the oral phase of the libido is the phase in which the infant invests uh, in her him before any differentiation is made between self and other, in which child uh, see, uh, sees him, her, uh, him or herself um, as a, a whole with an object. First of all, mother's breasts. We are now able to see that there is a crucial difference between identification with saint and identification with celebrity narcissistic investment of the ego. Religious belief and worshiping of the saints, as well as political identifications, also rely on strong narcissistic component. However, it is a narcissism of different kind. I quote Freud, infants come to love themselves if they loved the parents who loved them. It is a healthy narcissism in everyday identifications. Also, narcissism is related to the imaginary identification. The difference between imaginary and the symbolic identification is of the crucial importance here. Where the imaginary identification is an identification with the image in which we appear ourselves likable, we see ourselves uh, like um, um, uh, more beautiful, more clever than we are, etc. The so symbolic identification is the identification that with the very place from which we are being observed, from where we look at ourselves, so we are appearing to ourselves likable, worthy of love. So in a symbolic identification, we find no uh, similarity between us and our ego ideal, but we try to follow that ego um, ideal. It would be better to see fans identifying with the symbolic David Bowie, the strong David Bowie, whose own superego urged him to be hard working. However, Bowie's talents is usually approached through an imaginary order, where it is seen as something given as if the real characteristics that are uh, needed in order to be successful would ruin the legend. For example, it is symptomatic how uh, fans are constantly uh, stressing his drug episodes and not his uh, hard working uh, uh, um, perspectives on life. So, in his study, The Future of an Illusion, of an illusion uh, transitional study from personal to the social level of the analysis, Freud described the transfer of the individual growth to the level of the culture and civilization and pointed on the necessity of the super ego agency. If the new ideas on the social and economic equality are to be raised, it cannot be done without straightening of the superego, internalization of rules and external coercions, which, as Freud wrote, present a most precious, precious, precious sorry, cultural asset in the psychological field. In the same manner, child becomes a moral and social being through superego as the collective is straightening through the formation of that agency. It is only through an installation of the superego that the critique of political economy can be reaffirmed and brought on the stage of the political ideas. Kovel addressed the problem as dissociation. In advanced capitalism, at least in bourgeoisie families, dissociation produces citizens that are unable to affirm to any unity or project or purpose or common goal, says Kovel. Persons live without much attachment, barely without any notion of transcendence or universality. They do fine with the rules of everyday alienated discourse, but have lost any understanding of class consciousness. Although the problem with narcissism surely lies, I quote Kovel, in troubled form of human relationship, um, 
the more substantial problem is to be found in the material economic consequences of narcissistic investments. In other words, in establishing and maintaining a specific form of production. We can list three types of concrete manifestation of uh, psychological distortions. Firstly, Bowie music and work in general produces surplus through financialization of his music, but also of everything that accompanies it. Not only that Bowie our, Bowie's artwork is a commodity, of course, but polit political economy, economy of David Bowie is an interesting um, model of the emergent oppositional form of production of the surplus through financialization of er eras, um, eras that were not privatized uh, and commodified previously, and I will not elaborate this in details, but um, it would be also interesting to see a relation between musicians' biography and history of political economy, the influence of the welfare state on the formation of his generation, and financialization that ruined welfare state's uh, benefits. Um, some uh, leftists um, uh, elaborated on, on this um, in more details. Here, uh, we will skip the analysis of economic models of Bowie's industry that can be found in examples such as Bowie Net, Bowie Bank, and even Bowie's celebrity bond. And only note that such economy presents a type of materialization of the political economy and dialectic described by Marx in Capital in the paragraph about the primitive accumulation within the definition of formal and real subsumption. Capital firstly draws into itself the production forces and monopolizes the means of production, after which it transforms so social relations in order to produce relations in um, uh, production appropriate for the production of surplus. It is not much different today. Formal subsumption resembles the industrial uh, one. However, the formal subsumption is less and less related to material means of production and more to abstract ma uh, mathematical models in that um, uh, manner also his celebrity bond would be very interesting to analyze. Secondly, to look is to labor as Jonathan Beller wrote. The phenomenon that Beller refers to as the cinematic mode of production extended the laboring hours to private hours in which celebrity culture plays a crucial role. Process presents a well-known def uh, 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 defense of the capital against what Marx described in the third volume of Capital as tendency of the rate of profit to fall. The countering of the falling rate of profit, which historically was accomplished in a variety of ways, including longer work hours and increasing efficiency through the utilization of tailorization and machinery, is today still accomplished in effect by extending the work, working day. Only the means are different. Television, cinema, and other media are providing the ground for what Beller calls spectacular uh, spectator a worker that is working constantly and especially well when positioned before the television. Third, thirdly, introducing a new forms of surplus value and new spectator worker brings also, as we already saw, the new spiritualized and new psychological uh, spiritualized models and new psychological pathologies. If cinema is regarded as a form of the capital, so is the vita and melancholia. Narratives on celebrities, as well as emergence of new forms of pathology, pathologies, signalize that something that first looked like a private symptom can be recognized as concrete manifestation of the general economic framework. In other words, Covell's description of dissociation, narcissistic individuals investing in their ego, are the bearers of new types of the subjectivities. To conclude, it is obvious that no celebrity can escape the rules of production in capitalism. As Jameson noted, even overtly political interventions are somehow secretly disarmed and reabsorbed, reabsorbed by the system of which they themselves might, might well be considered a part, since they can achieve no distance from it. That does not mean that, as some leftists uh, put it, uh, artists are the missionaries of capital. Capitalist form of production, needless to say, turns everything into a commodity. As Marx said, all that is solid melts into air, all that is holy is profaned. However, it is important and somehow very difficult to differentiate David Bowie from his political economy. 
the biological persona of which fans do not know anything, an imaginary persona with which they identified, cast a shadow over his economic dimension. When David Bowie passed away, many people shared some of the, his songs on the social networks. Underneath those post, posts, the subtitle was stating, available on iTunes. If there is a lesson of the Vita of Saint Bowie, then it would allow subjects to see the blind spot in front of their eyes, the iTunes as the real of this event, concrete manifestation of sublime attachments. Thank you.